Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution I've never taken a look at before, and that distribution is called Spiral Linux. Spiral Linux, the reason I haven't taken a look at it before is because it hasn't been around that long. It's a rather new distribution, but they just had a release just about a week or so ago, version 11.220925. A very bad version number. I hate distributions that name their versions uh, with such a lengthy strings of numbers. Of course, 11.220925. It's a Debian based distribution, so the 11, I'm assuming, means it's based on Debian 11, and then .220925, that's a timestamp, right? So it was just released September 25th. Today is September 30th, so really about six days ago, this new version came out. It's again based off of Debian, but what really makes this interesting and why I'm excited to check this out is the creator of Spiral Linux has also created another Linux distribution that I've always enjoyed when I've tested it out. He's the creator of Gecko Linux, which is an OpenSUSE based distribution. And I, I think that's great because now he's bringing what he's doing with Gecko Linux, which is a fantastic distribution, over to a Debian-based distribution and basically trying to recreate that same uh, kind of thing where Gecko Linux takes OpenSUSE and it creates all of these really nice polished desktop editions based off of OpenSUSE and I'm hoping Spiral Linux is going to do the same for Debian. So if I go to the Spiral Linux website, which is spiralinux.github.io, you can read a little bit about it, but one of the things is it mentions the desktop environments that are available. We have options for Cinnamon, XFCE, GNOME, Plasma, Mate, Budgie, LXQt, and then something called Builder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick the Budgie edition to play with today. And the reason I picked the Budgie edition is because alphabetically, when I went to the download page that was the first ISO to grab so I went with it and also I actually quite like the budgie desktop environment for a GTK based desktop environment I find budgie rather familiar and easy to use so that's the one I grabbed and I'm gonna go ahead and spin up a virtual machine and we're gonna run through a quick installation and first look of spiral Linux budgie so we've come to the boot menu here and I'm gonna go ahead and just boot into the live environment and we get some Debian branding here. Uh, one of the things about the creator of Gecko Linux is even Gecko Linux, like the splash screens and the boot menus and everything, they all say OpenSUSE because he doesn't want to rebrand uh, everything as Gecko Linux. He acknowledges that for the most part his distribution is essentially OpenSUSE. I'm assuming that's what he's going to do with Spiral Linux is even though it's not really Debian, he's not going to try to hide the fact that it's Debian, right? So you're going to see a lot of uh, Debian logo and Debian branding as you explore, for example, right here in the menu, right? In the Debian logo, right? Instead of the Spiral Linux logo. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the installer. And they are using the Calamares installer and the welcome screen asks you to select a language for the installer. By default, it's American English, which is fine for me. So I'm going to click next. And then the time zone, it has not chosen the correct time zone for me. It's chosen the Eastern time zone here in the U.S., but I am in the Central time zone. So let me fix that. Then I'm going to click next and then selecting your keyboard layout. It has defaulted to English U.S. and that is correct for me. So I'm going to click next and then let's go ahead and partition our drive. We can either erase disk giving the entire drive over to Spiral Linux or we can do some manual partitioning and for me I'm just going to do the automatic partitioning by choosing erase disk and letting Spiral Linux have the entire virtual hard drive in this virtual machine and let's go ahead and decide whether we want to swap or not. I'm going to choose a swap file and it looks like it's going to default to a ButterFS file system but we could choose XFS, F2FS or Extend4 Typically, I do extend four on all my stuff, but I'm going to go with the default for ButterFS since that was chosen by default. So I'm going to click next. And now let's go ahead and enter a username. I'm going to call my user DT. Let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And now let's go ahead and click next. Then we get our summary screen. Location is good. Keyboard is good. The partition scheme is good. So I'm going to go ahead and click the install button. And away it goes. This portion of the installation typically takes about 5 to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be back once Spiral Linux has finished installation.
And the installation has completed. That took about five minutes. So in the Calamaris installer to complete installation, what you need to do is tick on the box that says restart now. And then you need to click done. If I hide my head, I'm going to go ahead and click the done button and it should automatically restart our virtual machine. And it says, please remove the live medium. So if you're installing this on physical hardware, this is where you should unplug the USB stick from the computer on reboot. In my case, I need to detach the ISO that I booted off of before the VM will reboot properly. And it rebooted just fine. And you can see we get to our login manager. The login manager looks to be LightDM. Let's go ahead and log in to what should be the budgie desktop environment. And we are logged in. And now let's go ahead, before I get started, let me go ahead and search for display, or maybe it is monitor. Maybe it is resolution. I, I need to change the uh, screen resolution here. Would Control Alt T bring up a terminal? It will not. If I hit the super key, I'll get the menu again. Let me search for terminal. And I will just do this from the command line since I can't find a graphical tool to do this. I'm going to do X render S 1920 by 1080 and change to a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. Now what's interesting about this is this actually has a Gecko Linux kind of feel to it, even though it's Debian based. Uh, I've seen this wallpaper before, this green uh, raindrop wallpaper in Gecko and OpenSUSE. And I, I think, you know, they're trying to bring that OpenSUSE green to Debian. And I think Debian could use a little more green. We have our top panel here. Now, Budgie is configurable. You can move the panel to the, from the top to the bottom if you wanted. But they're doing a top panel by default with a bottom dock. They're kind of going for that, I guess, Mac OS uh, kind of paradigm which is fine for me i'm going to go into the menu system and let's see what is installed by default let's break it down by category so let's go into accessories accessories we have our file search utility uh, catfish which is a standard uh, xfce program for searching for files you have files which should be our file manager but let's see which one they're actually using since files is not a very descriptive name right so they are using nemo 4.8.6 so nemo is typically the file manager i believe that the cinnamon desktop environment uses also under accessories we have firmware it says install firmware on devices i'm in a, a virtual machine uh, everything should be fully free and open source that the virtual machine needs so i don't think i'm gonna need that i don't think it would do anything for me in the vm if i clicked on it then we have our menu editor so this is i'm assuming is an application where i could edit what appears in our menu system here so that could be useful if you need to add like a, a link to maybe a custom script of yours or something that doesn't create its own like dot desktop file so therefore it normally wouldn't appear in the menu but you can force stuff to appear in this menu then you have parcelite which is a really cool clipboard manager you can see it's already launched by default i actually haven't clicked on it but this is parcelite over here if i go to uh, about parcelite 1.2.1 if i just click on it you can see edit clipboard and i could uh you know put stuff in the clipboard right now the clipboard is empty because i've never used it so there's nothing to do just yet and then also under accessories we have our quick character control i'm not sure what that is run quick character use shortcut key super alt c i'm not sure what that does so I, I better just leave it alone since i don't know what it actually does then we have text editor let's see what text editor they are using it looks like gedit see about text editor yeah gedit 3.38.1 so this is gnome's plain text editor so already you can see they're using a mix of xfce apps cinnamon apps gnome apps all gtk based desktops and budgie of course is a gtk based desktop also under accessories we have wall street control i don't know this is another one i've never heard run wall street use random wallpaper so i guess this is a wallpaper utility yeah sync to lock screen so uh, yeah this is probably something to change wallpapers every few minutes so if you guys are familiar with other wallpaper changing programs i know a lot of people use the program called variety variety will you can set it to change to a random wallpaper every few minutes, every hour, or whatever it happens to be. And uh, that seems like that's a similar kind of program to Variety. Then we have Windows Shuffler Control. I'm not sure what this is either. So this looks like window controls for things like tiling and snapping. So if I go to tiling, Control Alt 7 gets us to the top left. Let's try it. So Control Alt 7. 
Mm, didn't work on that window, but maybe that's a, some kind of special window that normally that wouldn't work. Let's try Control Alt 7 on the file manager. Yeah, so if Control Alt 7 is supposed to be for tiling, it's definitely not working right now, unless maybe I haven't turned it on. Enable Windows Shuffler. Okay, now that I've enabled it, now let me go back to the file manager. Control Alt 7. Ah, now it works. Control Alt 6. Control Alt 5. Just open something else, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm probably going to turn that off for now just so I don't accidentally hit some key bindings. Under administration, we have our Grub customizer, so you can change the look of the Grub boot menu, all right? And then you have Light DM greeter settings so that you can change the theme and the wallpaper of your Light DM login manager. Then you have Synaptic Package Manager, which I was actually hoping we would find here. So this is a GUI package manager for Debian and Debian based distributions. Synaptic is a wonderful program that if you're on any Debian based distribution, I would strongly recommend installing because it's just a, a great program as far as installing, removing packages, updating your system, changing repositories. A matter of fact, by default, Spiral Linux is based on Debian Stable, but if I go into Settings and I go to Repositories, let's see if I can change to Testing or maybe even the Unstable branch of Debian if I was kind of crazy, right? So, uh, so I could, if I wanted to, tick off all of the standard Debian sources here, and then if I go to Other Sources, there is the testing repository that I could turn on, and there is the unstable repository that I could turn on. I'm not gonna do that, but for those of you that want to live a little bit on the rolling edge, right, you wanna make it a rolling distribution, you can do that through the Synaptic Package Manager. We get back into the menu. Also under administration, we have our time and date utility, and then we have users and groups if you need to create extra users on the system. Under the graphics category, we really don't have much here. We have a drawing program, we have our image viewer we have two image viewers we have gthumb and then one just called image viewer i'm assuming with the generic name it's probably gnome's image viewer it is the gnome image viewer 3.38.2 strange that there's two different image viewers installed and then we have a uh, libreoffice draw under internet our default browser is firefox esr that's the extended support release of firefox let me make it full screen here and if i go into help and about Firefox, you can see version 102.3.0 ESR. So Firefox, of course, the most popular free and open source web browser on the planet. And it's typically the default browser on most Linux systems. Also under internet, we have Pigeon for internet messaging. That's something very few people have a, a need for these days. Not too many people need an IM program, but it's there if you need it. And Thunderbird, which honestly these days, not too many people need a desktop email client. I still use desktop email, so I, I'm happy that distributions still include something like Thunderbird because it's a great program, honestly, for a email client. Then we have Transmission, which is our... BitTorrent client. This is part of the GNOME suite of applications. So transmission, if I go to about, you can see this is transmission 3.0, a fast and easy BitTorrent client. Under the Office category, we have uh, just a few of the LibreOffice programs here. We don't have the entire suite of applications. This is the most popular ones. We have Calc, Impress, and Writer. Calc is the spreadsheet program. Impress is the presentation program. And of course, LibreOffice Writer is the word processor. And let's see what version they are on being based on Debian stable, you know, there could be some older packages here. This is LibreOffice 7.0.4.2. And we have a other category and we have the snapper GUI. Now let me go ahead and open this because I've got some idea what this is because of the name snapper. I'm assuming this has to do with our ButterFS snapshots because they default to ButterFS for a file system, which makes sense because Gecko Linux defaulted to ButterFS for a file system. Actually, OpenSUSE <laughs> defaults to ButterFS for a file system and has done that for years. And the thing with ButterFS as a file system is it has the ability to create snapshots for you. You can create them yourself. Actually, looking at the documentation for Spiral Linux, I did notice that in their documentation, they do mention that the optimal ButterFS subvolume layout with S 
that the optimal ButterFS subvolume layout with Z standard transparent uh, compression and automatic snapper snapshots bootable via grub, yada, yada, yada. That's <laughs> a lot of talk, but if I click the link, you can see working with ButterFS snapshots and rollbacks, it says, by default, Spiral Linux uses ButterFS with a subvolume layout conducive to booting read-only snapshots and performing proper rollbacks. So it's going to take snapshots for you, and you're going to be able to roll back if something goes wrong. If you get a bad update, you can roll back to the previous snapshot, the previous working state of your machine. And it looks like it can do this automatically for you every time you add or remove packages via the apt package manager. So anytime, anytime you install, remove, or update your system. It should take a snapshot for you, or you can uh, do it yourself. You can manage this stuff yourself using that snapper GUI tool that we just showed. So, And then we have our preferences category. Not much is in preference other than the settings panel. So this should be like our settings manager. And of course, the first thing that pops up are backgrounds. And the backgrounds look like our standard Debian wallpaper pack, right? So if I choose one of these. Why did the wallpaper not change? Is there something else I need to click? I don't see anything else in this window. Let me make the window full screen. Yeah, that's very weird. The wallpaper is not changing. That could just be some issue with the virtual machine. I'm not sure. So I, I won't uh, complain too much about that. But this is just your standard, almost like your GNOME control panel, G GNOME settings manager, right? With your standard options for uh, if you need to change settings for things like sound and power. There's the display so we could change the resolution, which I already did via the command line. And you can see it's reflected here in the GUI as well. So no need to play with that anymore. Under sound and video, we have Clementine for our audio. Audio player so this would be of course your music player Clementine is a, a, a really old kind of, of audio player I don't think it sees any development or not much at all anymore nowadays most people that were using Clementine have moved to a more modern fork of Clementine called uh, strawberry I believe you know fruit names Clementine strawberry <laughs> so um, but again this is based off of Debian stable and there may not be a strawberry in the Debian stable repositories I don't know if I go to about Clementine here Clementine version 1.4 RC2 also under sound and video, we have our pulse audio volume control. And we also have VLC for a media player. And this is mainly for movies, but you could also play audio in VLC if you choose to. What version of VLC are they on? This is version 3.0.17.4. Let's go ahead and close that out. And I see uh, Clementine, when I closed it, actually just minimized to an icon sitting in the sys tray here. So let me click on that and all the way quit out of Clementine. Let me go ahead and open a terminal one more time. I really don't like the blinding white background of the terminal before I continue. Let's go to preferences just because people that are watching this video, I know you guys are going to be very annoyed. Uh, so let's choose any theme that has a dark theme. Gnome dark, for example, whatever that happens to be. Yeah, just some light text on a dark background and let's do a uname dash r so the kernel version is 5.18.0 let's see if htop is installed it is and right now our budgie desktop environment it is using 845 megs of the six gigs of ram that i gave this vm so not terribly heavy not terribly light it's about standard for a, a desktop environment these days on linux let me go ahead and queue to quit out of htop let's see how many packages are installed on spiral linux so if i do apt list dash dash installed we should get a one package on a line list of everything that is installed on Spiral Linux. Now, if I take that and then pipe that into WC, the word count program, dash L for a line count rather than a word count, how many lines were in that output? 1,756 lines. So that means 1,756 packages are currently installed on Spiral Linux. And because I haven't installed anything at all, that's what it is by default, at least on the Budgie Desktop Edition. So that was just a very cursory look at the latest Spiral Linux. And I think Spiral Linux is rather unique. I, th I think it's actually very polished. It is a lot like Gecko Linux. If you like Gecko Linux, but you'd rather be on a Debian-based distribution rather than something based on OpenSUSE, then it makes sense. You don't see a lot of Linux distribution maintainers 
that maintain two different versions, essentially, of their Linux distribution as far as two different bases. Uh, Linux Mint is unique in that they base some distributions off of Ubuntu and some of their distributions off of Debian, right? They kind of maintain two different things, although Debian and Ubuntu are a lot more similar than, say, SUSE and Debian, which is what Gecko Linux and Spiral Linux are doing. So uh, I think this is a great addition as far as, you know, we have so many Linux distributions. Some people would argue there's too many out there, but I think this is going to be a welcome addition to the community. And I think a lot of people that want Debian with some good customized desktop environments already installed with graphical tools such as the Snapper GUI for the ButterFS rollbacks and the Synaptic Package Manager, which allows you to change from the stable repositories to the testing repositories to the SID repositories, just like that. That I, I think a lot of people will find appealing. I know I would. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimic, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Why You Bald, Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dioka, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nate, Erion, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Realities for Less Red Prophets, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Spiral Linux, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. Debian distros, they don't die, they multiply.